Uh, Laura Jana Klausner, Senior Rabbi at Reform Judaism, is here. Uh, good morning. To tell us what's caught her eye, we'll speak to her in a minute. Let's have a look first at the front pages. Yes, we'll start with the Observer this morning and the story there on the front cover there is Britain's poised to open the door to thousands of migrant children. Uh, and this is David Cameron, of course, considering plans to admit thousands of unaccompanied migrant children into the UK within weeks. Uh, front page of the Independent School's told to drop university snobbery. Nikki Morgan wants uh, an, outdate, an end to the outdated bias, she says, that pushes high flyers into degree courses. Uh, the Mail on Sunday has a story about their own investigation here um, about uh, a child aged six who was groomed for a jihadi, uh, to be a jihadi in British <coughs> suburbia. Uh, he says, he's, although he's only six years old and lives in the heart of a British suburbia, he and his siblings are being groomed to support barbaric Islamic State terrorists. And it's exclusive pictures in there. Front page of the Telegraph, uh, of course, uh, gearing up to uh, this big summit in Brussels in February. Europe, the gloves are off as Tory rift winds. 40 backbenchers uh, want more from the Prime Minister as he tries to get those reforms. And on the front of the Express, the Sunday Express this morning, uh, an exclusive story for them, which is about a terrorist plot to attack Britain, which was foiled, they say, after the RAF heard commercial pilots discussing targets on their radios. So, as I said, Rabbi Laura Jana Klausner is with us to take us through the papers. And you've picked out this story of uh, Jeremy Corbyn going to this camp, not the jungle, it's the one near Dunkirk, isn't it? A sister camp. Well, he went to both. He Did went he? to the jungle and to Dunkirk. But actually, I don't want you to look at Jeremy Corbyn. I want you to look at the woman next to him. This woman is called Liz, and I met her on Wednesday when I was in the jungle visiting in Calais. Um, she's a woman who runs, there's a, they have a very few, where they have women there and quite a lot of children. And we met some of the children who the, the, the day after were allowed to come into Britain to be reunited with their families. And shockingly, there are minors there, 12 year olds, 14 year olds, 16 year olds, who are on their own in the middle of this awful refugee camp. And they are not migrants, they are refugees. So one of the things that they were saying, and the adults there that we spoke to again and again, it's the second time I've been there, is that there's no legal process. There's no legal process to say no. Actually, you shouldn't have asylum. There's no legal process to find out what their background is. They are in complete limbo. Um, and what we need is actually some process. It's the first time that the process has come in where people can register these unaccompanied minors or adults. So they're in limbo, and then you have this awful situation that was just described with the Road Haulage Association, mm. where truck drivers are getting attacked or people m are involved in a mob riot, which is horrendous. And one of the reasons is they need a place they can go and they can say, this is my name and these are the reasons, and we can turn around and say no or yes. Mm. And g given you've been there twice, yes. did you see much of a change between those two visits in terms of mm. things getting better or worse? Well, things are much worse. They're not people coming now into the jungle because they've been put off um, by the situation. It's, it's colder. People are intense. They've also put up these port well, basically porter cabins. Mm. Um, I mean, the difficulty is they don't want it to be permanent, do they? So Absolutely. So, so if you they put an office there to process people, like you say, then more people will come. And it's always that balance, isn't it? Well, they need an office somewhere. We do not have, outside Britain, a process that you can register. So it doesn't matter if it's in Paris or if it's in Calais, in Calais itself, or where you have a consulate or a registering situation and people can turn around and say, this is my background, accept me or reject me. The only way to enter Britain is illegally. Very sad. Yeah, it's something I know we'll be talking about throughout the programme. Um, a couple of other stories that you've picked out is one to do with the cost of medicines, which is in the, the Sunday Sun this morning. Yes. So this, the cost of medicines with a brand name is six times as high as with a you know, normal shop name, a generic name. And for us, I think there's a thing saying, I must buy X that has a particular name because I feel safer buying it. But it's a lack of information because you can buy exactly the same ingredients mm. for a sixth of the price. Yeah, I find that so much, obviously, going around the country visiting factories and things, yes. is how many of them will be making lots of different products for different companies but just putting a different label on, you know, whether it's sandwiches mm -hmm. or Absolutely. whatever product. And, and you get that a lot, not just with medicines, don't you? Absolutely. And the different label says six times as much if it's the named one. Yeah. And you've been looking at the list of most influential people in Britain. How many are there? 500 of them. Uh, yes, and on that list, what's been interesting, there's a thing also about broadcasters, that women 
are much less likely to be uh, broadcasters, that's why it's good you're here, mm -hmm. um, than uh, men. And on the list of the most influential, you have a list of broadcasters. On the left-hand side, there are 11, and they're all chaps. And on the right-hand side, you have three. So out of, I think, 22, you have three women. So it must be very not so much harder to do that in broadcasting and also not to have to... Uh, and have, they were talking about very low levels of sexism that is coming, I won't ask you. But uh, that's quite a, you know, we, we, you are role models for us. We look at you, we listen to you. So to have role models that don't reflect society is very difficult. There's really? a lot of pressure on women on television. Though. I'm not saying, you know, poo yeah, at me or anything. Yeah. I've got a great job. Yeah, but, you uh, but, you know, there is that pressure more than there is for men in terms of looks and everything else. Yeah, so absolutely. it's hard to stay normal in a way, isn't it? It, it is. It, it is. And I know when I sit here, I think, gosh, what do I look like? Which is mad rather than thinking, what have I actually said? Yeah. Laura, we're going to be talking to you a bit later on Thank as well. You. Thank you very much. Thank I've covered you. the chair in newspapers here. <laughs> Sorry. Be it an MS. That's quite all right. You did it very well. Uh, the